Hello Gator Scientist! Today we are going to move on with our animal unit and study endothermic and ectothermic animals. Vertebrates differ in the way that they control their body temperature. In some, like fish, amphibian, and reptiles, their body temperature is close to that of their environment. They are considered cold-blooded or ectothermic because if it's cold outside, it's going to be cold on the inside of their body. If it's warm outside, it's going to be warm on the inside of their body. So their body temperature is controlled by the environment and that is called cold-blooded or ectothermic. So they're synonyms of each other. In other words, birds and mammals, we are mammals, and of course birds are the only two that share being warm-blooded or endothermic. Their body temperature stays constant regardless of the temperatures in the environment. I mean, yeah, we have to put on a coat or sometimes we take off our jacket when we're hot or we even sweat when we're hot, but basically we are endothermic, warm-blooded, and our bodies constantly try to keep the temperature the same. That's called homeostasis stasis, homeostasis, keeping temperatures the same. Endo and ecto, also if you think about it, there is um, ectothermic, ecto means out, therm means heat. So this is a study of word parts, so ecto means out or outer, therm means heat, and that would mean it would be cold-blooded, outside heat. Uh, endothermic, endo means inside, therm again means heat, so that would mean inside heat or warm-blooded. This is a thermal image of just showing the difference between warm-blooded and cold-blooded uh, animals. And so these are birds and mammals, they are endothermic. A human is endothermic. See how you can see the heat inside of it? Uh, this would be an ectothermic animal. The heat register is very, very cold. And again here, it's warm only if it is in like a heated area. But notice that the tail is very cold. Warm-blooded endothermic animals, such as birds and mammals, maintain a nearly constant internal temperature in any environment. When hot outside, an endothermic animal can cool off by doing a couple of different things. It will either sweat, like humans, pant, like a dog, change position, like a dog will go lay in the shade, or change location, literally just uh, migrate to a different area. Sweating and panting generally are heat loss through evaporating water from your body. So when a dog is panting, it's not thirsty. It's actually generating heat loss through evaporating water out of its body. A lot of children think, oh, my dog is thirsty, and it ru they run and get water for their dog. But panting does not mean thirst. Endothermic animals eat more often than ectothermic animals since it takes energy to maintain a constant body temperature. So we need to eat more often. A lion eats its weight in food every seven to ten days. So a lion, of course, is a mammal and that means that it needs to eat. So if a mammal is, if a lion is 79 pounds, then it eats 79 pounds worth of food every 7 to 10 days. That's pretty amazing. So humans would eat food in order to keep their body temperature the same. And so would birds. Cold-blooded ectothermic animals, that ecto, remember, means outside heat, ectothermic outside heat, like fish, amphibians, and reptiles, they have internal body temperatures that change with the environment. So they have to get their heat to perform activities like digestion. So if it's cold outside, an ectothermic animal has, it, it'll just naturally move slow. Some animals bask in the sun, like a lizard or a snake, or move to a warmer area like fish, They'll, the whole school of fish will move uh, to hunt 
or to find food or to so that they can keep their body temperature. If you are by a snake in the winter, it is going to move more sluggishly, slower, so you are more apt to not get struck at in the winter. But in the summer, no holes barred. It's going to get you if you're in its path and you're aggravating it or even if it just feels funny. It will want to strike at you and it will move four times faster in the summer. So it has a lot more heat to keep it so that it doesn't move sluggishly. And they do use that word sluggish on the benchmark. They use the word sluggish on the pass test. So do remember that sluggish means that it moves slower. Sluggish starts with an S. Slower starts with an S. If it's too hot outside, ectothermic animals, remember ecto outside, thermic means heat, ecto outside thermal means heat. Uh, they'll look to burrow in the ground to keep its bo their bodies cool. They'll, they'll dig in mud and put the mud on top of them. Since the cold-blooded animals take on the temperature of their surroundings, they don't have to use food energy to keep warm. So they don't have to eat as often. So a snake would not necessarily need food as often as a lion would because a lion is uh, able to just move on. And that's pretty much it. Thank you for uh, being so patient with the lesson and we hope that you enjoyed it.